Hi. Now, before I even tell you as to what is contained in this course, I must explain to you what is the stock selection process or rather how do we go about selecting stocks. Now to understand this, let us say that I have $10,000 with me out of my savings and I would like to invest that in an automobile company. Whether 10,000 or 1,000, that is immaterial. But say I want to invest in a company, an automobile company. And if I am investing for a long period, then I am actually buying a stake in that company. I am becoming a part owner of that company. So if the company's capital comprises of say 500 million shares and I purchase 500 shares out of it, then it would mean that I own 0.0001% of that company. I am a 0.0001% stakeholder in that company. Alright? But there are 10 automobile companies in the country. Which one should I own? Or whose shares should I purchase? Because you see, even if I go to purchase vegetable in the market, I would go to four shops and see where I am getting a better deal. So if I am buying a stake in an automobile company, shouldn't I do some due diligence? Shouldn't I evaluate which one will give me better returns on my investment? Where should I put in my money? And how do I decide which one will grow faster than the other? That means, is there a process for selecting a good stock or a good share or for that matter a good company? Yes, exactly. There is a method, there is a process. So what I will do is, I will first of all shortlist 5 or 6 companies out of the 10 which are available. That I will do based on my gut feeling. Three or four companies based on their reputation and my gut feeling, I know that these are not worth investing because their vehicles are not doing good. The price is consistently falling. So I will straight away discard them. The remaining five or six companies, those I will try and evaluate to find out which one is better than the other. So what I will do is, for these five or six companies, which I will, you know, uh, shortlist based on my general knowledge. First of all, for each of them, I will read and analyze their balance sheet. Not for one year, not for the current year, but for the past five years. And why will I analyze the balance sheet? Why will I read the balance sheet? That will give me an idea as to how much wealth the company has and whether that wealth has increased or decreased over the period of past five years and how much is that wealth as on date how much is it today and then i will read and analyze the profit and loss statements again not for the current year not for one year but I will do that for the past five years. And this will give me an idea as to whether the company has been making profits or it is incurring losses. And if it is making profit, then is the profit consistently increasing or decreasing or is it stagnant? How the profit has been over the past five years? over a period of time all right and then i will read and analyze the cash flow statement again for the past five years the cash flow statement will tell me where the cash has been coming from and where the cash is going 
now see if it is an automobile company then the cash should be coming in through the sales of automobiles isn't it it shouldn't happen that the cash has come in but the cash has come because of selling off of some land or plant and machinery or because of borrowings it shouldn't happen like that and similarly where is the cash going is the company fretting away the cash or is the cash going into long term other investments into growth into further expansions diversifications where is the cash going in short the cash flow statement will tell me whether the company is wisely utilizing the cash over the years or not so all these three statements will tell me something different the balance sheet will tell me how much is the worth of the company today and the profit and loss statement will tell me whether the company has been growing or is it stagnant or is it retarding and again the cash flow statement will tell me how judiciously the cash is being utilized and thereafter i will do some ratio analysis for each of these five or six companies why will i do the ratio analysis to determine how they compare with each other among these five or six companies how do they compare with each other which one is better value today and which one is likely to be better value in the future see it may happen that one company may be generating good profits today but is in a dying down position for example a tree which may be giving good fruits today but that tree is in the process of dying down on the other hand there may be a young plant which is not giving fruits today but in the process of giving a good harvest in the future so where would i invest my money in a plant or a tree which is already dying down or in a crop which is likely to give a good harvest in future and then among these five or six companies which one is growing faster than the other which one is more risky than the other see again it may happen that one company may be growing very fast but at the same time it may be taking lot of risk on the other hand another company may be growing comparatively slower but not taking lot of risk so where would i like to invest my money and similarly there are lot many more answers which i would like to find out through ratio analysis and based on my analysis analysis of the three financial statements and the ratios i may discard three out of the six companies straight away maybe after analyzing i would determine that out of these six companies two or three are not worth investing at all and the remaining three probably i may prioritize them as number 1 number 2 and number 3 and thereafter i may invest a major portion of my money in number 1 company a little lesser in number 2 company and maybe some amount in number 3 company that is how i am diversifying my investment or maybe i shall invest the entire amount in one company itself the number 1 company it depends how i want to diversify my investment all right so this is the process which i would be following to invest my money and select a good stock or a share but the point is to do all this i need to know what is contained in a balance sheet and how to understand it i also need to know what is contained in the profit and loss statement and how to understand it i also need to know what is contained in a cash flow statement and again how to understand it 
Thereafter, I need to know how to do the ratio analysis. And this is exactly what we are going to learn in this course. But remember that we need to take a holistic view. In the process of learning, I will be talking of certain things like the working capital, the working capital cycle, the debt equity ratio, the liquidity aspects, and then um, maybe I'll talk about the retained earnings and things like that. You may wonder as to why I'm trying to teach you those things. How are they relevant to selecting a stock? But yes, they are. We need to have a holistic picture and understand the financial statements in the true sense. And then only we will get a true picture of what we are trying to look at. And then also remember that it is not a one time effort. It is not that you study the financial statements, you do the ratio analysis, you invest your $10,000 and you forget about it. It doesn't happen like that. It is a continuous process. Whenever you are investing, whenever you are buying a new share for a long term investment, you will have to do all this analysis. And even if you don't buy new shares, the same shares periodically you will have to review them. You will have to analyze them again after a period of time to determine whether what you have analyzed still holds good or not. And then also remember that the result of what you do today or what you analyze today will be seen after a couple of years. And you will not be doing this analysis only for yourself. You may do it for your friends, your family. And if you take it as a profession, financial analysis as your profession, then you may be doing it for your clients. So your clients should come back after a couple of years and thank you and must tell you that the analysis what you had done for them has really given them good results. So I hope you have understood the process of stock selection and with a view to follow this process, we shall be continuing with this course. All right.